Hang on. Okay. So I think I can get started. Um, thanks for coming to my talk. I know it's the last one of the day, so <laughs> I keep everyone from dinner and beer, so, you know. So uh, I work for Gasolco Group. I'm a software engineer there. So disclaimer, this isn't my day job, uh, so it's kind of a hobby. So if I get anything wrong during a talk, just let me know. Like, like I said here, I do have a ham license in the US. Uh, there's my call sign. Actually, haven't used it yet. I've only had it for like six months. So basically, my talk will go over about receiving signals uh, with SDR, uh, transmitting costs a lot more and has more legalities. And there's tons of interesting things to receive. So SDR basically is um, moving traditional radio equipment into ASICs and FPGAs. Um, something that would be huge uh, can fit down to something this uh, size. Uh, basically can fit in a backpack. Uh, and also allows you to do high-end stuff with something that only costs you maybe five dollars or even a couple hundred dollars, uh, like GSM base station access point, and the, the infamous five-dollar um, RTSDR, which you can do pretty much everything uh, hobby related with that. Uh, so when you when you get started, with hardware selection, um, uh, utility matters, uh, frequency range that you can. Um, listen to with your uh, SDR card. Uh, the bandwidth uh, matters for depending on what you're going to sample. Uh, I mean, if you're if, uh, if you're listening, looking at uh, air traffic, it doesn't really take much, or FM radio, obviously. Uh, the sample rate matters um, because aliasing. Uh, also, the ADC bit rate um, it doesn't matter if you can do high bandwidth sampling if your um, eight, uh, your ADC is. Um, <laughs> doesn't give you an uh, inaccurate representation. Uh, cost matters. Um, so like I said, the, the $5 RTSDR, you can get them pretty much in the electronics market. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like five bucks. You get them on eBay, uh, about the same price. Uh, a little higher up is uh, the AirSpy. Uh, it's $150, uh, but it obviously has better frequency range and sample rate. Um, and uh, better ADC. Uh, also, uh, most of these are pretty portable, although some of these are pretty large, so you can't put them in a backpack. And some of them are quite expensive. Um, some of them are up to about $500, even more. Um, like I said, larger devices are usually more expensive. Uh, so some other equipment, uh, once you get a, a SDR card, is um, antennas. So there's wide assortment. Um, Homemade antennas are a pretty uh, fun hobby as well. Um, you can basically make them out of a coffee can or a pop can and just uh, solder on a connector. Uh, professional antennas obviously usually have a better gain, but um, obviously cost more and not as fun to you know, tinker around with. Uh, most of them have connectors, um, usually SMA or BNC, BNC, but there's usually more exceptions for compact hardware like Bluetooth. You'll, you'll want to get an assortment of cables and connectors on uh, like eBay or Alibaba. Uh, so there's some optional equipment you can get. Um, so most of these SDR cards only do high frequencies like 1800 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. If you want to listen like in the hand band, um, you're going to need a, uh, it's like a up converter. So it basically converts the frequency to something your SDR card can um, uh, read. Uh, then you're going to need to make an antenna, which this is just basically a TV um, for AC TV. You just solder on an SMA cable. Um, it works decent for you know um, ham radio that's nearby, two meter band. Uh, so yeah, this is a inverter. So this I think this was about seventy dollars or something U.S. obviously. Um, so there's uh, typical different antennas that you uh, want to get. Um, obviously, some have better gain than others. Um, monopole is usually if great if you have like a, a line of sight that's above you, like uh, like if you're on a flat plane. Dipole is usually better if you can mount it high up, uh, but you lose um, some of the gain in uh, one one uh, section of the plane. 
Uh, patch is good for um, satellites, uh, and since you know Dish Nintendo's here, if you need a license, um, this is a good um, substitute. Uh, obviously, it doesn't it doesn't make up for a Dish Nintendo, but it's you know it's nice and compact. Uh, and a long periodic one looks like this is a PCB one. Um, it's a good wideband antenna. Uh, it's omnidirectional. Not omnidirectional. It's yeah, yeah, it's omnidirectional. So you have to, actually it's just directional. You have to point it at what signal you're trying to receive. Uh, yeah, legal overview. I'm not a lawyer, so um, it's up to you to make sure you, what you're doing is legal. Uh, just because you can receive a signal doesn't mean it's legal. Um, I mean, there's things that you can't pick up, like pager traffic which is illegal, but it's not encrypted. So if you want to... <laughs> uh, also, for uh, actually transmitting, um, anything that's not on the ISM band, uh, Industrial Scientific Medical, uh, which uh, it, it varies widely between the IT, uh, inter, int, uh, IT really regions. I don't know what's in here, but in the US it's 915 megahertz, roughly. In Europe it's 415, if I remember correctly and that region. Uh, like I said, some equipment can be restricted. Uh, like I said, even uh, some uh, transmissions can have legal and illegal components to listen to. When we like satellite traffic, um, you can't listen to paging data or voice calls, but you could, you could actually look at the, um, the um, satellite location, uh, data that's um, being paged down. Uh, line of sight matters. Uh, obviously, in Singapore, there's not really any high elevations, so um, obviously, the higher the train, the lack of obstacles, buildings, and being outdoors will improve signals. Um, of course, that can be tricky here since you probably can't mount an antenna out, outside. Uh, so, monopole will work better in, like here for certain signals because it's your low, low, low lying area uh, and the valleys. Um, if you can put, uh, hoist the uh, antenna up on a dipole, um, that might work better for certain signals. And since you know you can't do dish, um, this, this doesn't really matter because you're, as long as you have a line of sight to the satellite or whatever uh, signal you're trying to receive isn't obstructed. So uh, there's some gains and mixing in SDR. So there's a, a few things. Uh, there's a low noise amplifier. Uh, so basically, it, you can get signals that are coming in, uh, signals that are coming uh, into your into your radio. Uh, you can also buy a little uh, amplifier. I think this was like 50 bucks online. Um, so it's powered actually over. It's powered over the actual connector port, uh, and that gives you a signal. Uh, important thing to note is when you amplify a signal, you're just not amplifying the signal, you're amplifying the noise too. So if you over amplify it, you um, can lose some of your signal and just, just have clips, uh, like clip signal. Um, and there's just local oscillator, mix, there's a mixer. So basically the local oscillator mixes with the RF that's coming off, uh, coming in. Uh, and you get interme intermediate frequency, which is um, which you can do, you actually use processing a software like a new radio on. Uh, so you, get, you need to match the signals to the antenna. So not all radio waves are um, linear or polarized. Um, like typically satellite and extraterrestrial ones are circular polarized. Uh, it helps to get through um, clouds and other uh, obstructions. Uh, linear polarization is usually um, uh, vertical but with the uh, exception of television, uh, which is horizontal. Uh, this just because at the time it seemed like uh, so we're using um, vertical for radio, we'll just use horizontal for television, and it's kind of legacy. <laughs> uh, and also with the magnetic loop antennas, which this is um, basically just a coil, um, current gets inducted. Uh, so otherwise, we'd have to have a long wire antenna, which would be uh, like 100 meters or more for ham radio. Uh, so you want to reduce noise. I mean, radio waves are electromagnetic signals, uh, and linear polarization has that right angle, so uh, it's reflective. Um, 
Most radio circuits listen to the E-field. Uh, I mean, most of the time, most of the antennas are E-field antennas, except for magnetic loop antennas. Um, ideally, you want to keep your um, antennas and your equipment away from um, your electronics. I mean, keep your uh, SDR card and antenna away from uh, electronics to reduce noise. Uh, so bias T, that's, that's basically um, allows you to power an RF device like the active antenna or the uh, uh, low noise amplifier using RF output. Um, so basically it puts five volts off this. Uh, you gotta make sure you don't have an antenna that's uh, connected to it that's grounded. Uh, so it, it, does, it does take less cables. I mean, otherwise you'd have to have another, another power cable going to your amplifier, uh, but it does require shielding on the amplifier and it's more compact and uh, deployment as possible. Uh, so here's just a basic jet diagram of how, how that actually can work. Um, so the power uh, so power at DC and RF, um, the RF goes into the device, DC goes out, the, the inductor filters out uh, any AC coming uh, from RF, and uh, the RF allows, the capacitor allows the RF frequency to go through the device. So yeah, uh, this is the, actually the uh, low noise amplifier that I'm using is um, LNA for all. Um, it's some guy in I think Romania that just makes these. Uh, people on the forums like it. Uh, I'll, uh, so I, I recommend that. And ideally, you want to have the amplifier close to the as possible. Uh, so outdoors will clearly increase signals, but uh, the L having a low noise amplifier can help in all applications. But again, keep in mind over amplification uh, can be worse than none. So just don't assume that you can crank it up and it will improve things. Uh, so here's some common interesting signals now from what you've gotten all your equipment. Um, so the, the typical one that everyone really gets into is the uh, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast, which is just basically you can see where plane positions uh, are. And you can, you can use the, for the $5 um, um, RTSDR, I mean, that's what people do mostly. Uh, basically, the, uh, AIS is basically the same thing, only with ships. Um, obviously, that's a little harder because you want to be higher than the ships uh, so you can you know, see out farther, because otherwise you're just seeing over the curve, curvature of the Earth, so it's not uh, that exciting. Also, most of those are today are actually broadcast satellites because piracy. They don't want to, you know, only when they come into ports do they actually start broadcasting. Uh, GPS, that's, that's a high-end. You, you need a special uh, module for that, and high-end SDR. It's, it's, uh, but you can make, um, you can you, you basically make an unlocked uh, GPS unit, which you technically can't buy, but you could. Um, uh, ham radio, uh, so there's certain, like I said, there's certain signals you can't listen to even if you you know, can pick them up, like uh, air traffic control. I think I was reading it's illegal to listen to in Singapore. Uh, I think technically you're not supposed to listen to ham radio bands if, if you don't have a ham radio license, but I was obviously they highly going to prove that, but just know, know the law. <laughs> uh, you can also see uh, there's, a, there's a nice wiki of, of different uh, see, um, signals you can read, uh, read up on. Uh, they have the, the waterfall chart and from GNU Radio. Uh, also, they have um, the frequency uh, that you can listen to it, and if it's common or uncommon. Uh, some of the interesting ones are the um, actual number stations uh, all over the world. It's, you know, spikes is used. So, uh, a little brief thing on open source utilities. Uh, obviously, most are going to be radio based because um, it has, you know, a full suite of you know filters and other things and. Um, it allows you to do a lot of stuff. It's not, it's not easy software to learn. I mean, it's very complex. Uh, some actually use um, just the libraries directly, which could be limiting, which is dump 1090, which is um, an actual look, looking at air traffic. Uh, so yeah, there's like, well, there's like 500 different forks, I think of that repo on GitHub and uh, yeah, some, some of them have interesting features that would be nice to have on this card that you have, but, uh, you know, trying to, you know, 
get mer get merge all those changes be uh, monumental. Although you, a lot of them do use uh, uh, GR Osman SDR plugin, which has support for a lot of SDR cards. And obviously, the, the original purpose was for their device, but um, AirSpy, <coughs> AirSpy, Edis, and other cards work with it. Uh, yeah, so most have a own version of RTL uh, FM, which is just basically you can you can set a frequency you want to listen to, uh, the bandwidth, um, and it just does a sig pipe of audio. So that's you know basic easy way to listen to FM, but you can also pass that through another program to do processing. Uh, like I said, the, the AirSpy I have here uh, has this, its own version, and pretty much most. Uh, cards have some the utility in some form. Uh, so here's an example of the, the waterfall of um, one of the radio, the new radio um, front ends, GR, uh, GQRX. Uh, so I think this is basically just listening to FM radio. Uh, you can see you can see the different stations, and yeah. Uh, so there's there's some other application just besides you know having a hobby and listening to you know, interesting signals. Uh, I mean you can you can detect you know possible things that are broadcasting that should be broadcasting. Uh, you can also use it to detect overpowering signals that shouldn't be you know overpowering like Wi-Fi or, or similar. Uh, and there's there, there's actually a if you don't want to actually want to buy a card, uh, there's a web SDR, uh, sdr.org that has a, tons of cards all over the world that you can listen to, like FM radio and other bands. Yeah, it doesn't cost you anything to get started there. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, SDR is a fun hobby. Um, it's cheaper than it used to be, uh, and it's it's a fun uh, RF learning experience. And like I said, I yeah, I did run through it quickly. So, uh, anyone have any questions? Yeah. So, so technically, I think you should be able to use a lot of these RTI sensors sort of the spectrum and the Yeah, that's kind of more expensive, right? <laughs> Yeah, you could modify it. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure if there's any applications that do that right now. Yeah. Uh, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? All right. Thanks.